Welcome to the 11 minute guide to building and launching an online store. In this tutorial, we're going to build a store using Ruby on Rails, Stripe Checkout.js, and then deploy it to Heroku. So let's get started by first making a new Rails app using the Rails new command. I'm going to use Postgres as the database, so we'll set that as a default by in the beginning. And then let's cd into the directory and then generate our first controller and action. We'll call it store controller and we'll have an index view and action. And we'll set that as a root path of the app. Once that's done, let's start the server. And you can see the app running here and pointing to the default index view of the store controller. So now let's edit that index view and add the markup for our store. So I'm just going to paste in a header to start with. The store is called stickers.win and we're going to sell stickers. Let me just add some styles so that the store looks decent. So let's say a pack of five stickers for $5. And we'll provide free shipping everywhere in the world. And then we're going to display our sticker inside a sticker class and it's just going to be an image tag, react all the things. So we're not actually going to use react in this tutorial, but this will be a fun thing to sell. Okay, let me just add that image here in the app assets images directory. And now if you look at the page, there are page loads with all the styles and the description and title for the product. Now for the fun part, let's add a buy now button using stripe checkout.js. Stripe Checkout is a cool JavaScript library which takes care of the front-end payment forms. You still need a back-end system to charge the customer, but Stripe Checkout takes care of the front-end. And Stripe has a very good guide for integrating Checkout with Rails, so that's what we're going to follow. Let's start off by installing the Stripe gem. So we'll add it to our gem file, run bundle, and then the next step is to generate a controller for creating charges. So we'll use the generator and say Rails C controller charges, this is where the code for charging the customer will go. So let's copy this create method from the Stripe checkout documentation and paste it into our charges controller. We set the amount we want to charge and then we make two API calls to Stripe. One for creating a new customer and another for charging that customer. And we're going to make a post call to this action from the Stripe checkout form that we will add to our page. Now it's very important to set and check the charge amount on the server. Do not accept or trust a value for this amount from the client because anyone could tamper with it and submit bogus values. And our sticker business will go up in flames before it even takes off. When we make a Stripe charge, we can send some metadata with that. So for example, here we can change this description. So let's change it to a pack of five stickers. One other thing we want to do is this error handling code we want to redirect the user to the root path. We don't actually have a new charges path. Our home page is where we're going to display any errors. Okay, the next bit is to add the form on the page. So let's take this markup from here and I'm just going to paste it into our index page of the store controller and let's change this to a product description, pack of five stickers, the other thing we need to do is to add charges as a resource in our config roots.rb file. Then let's configure the Stripe API keys. There are two keys, the public key and the secret key. So we save that in config initializers as stripe.rb. Let's add a prefix stripe to these keys so that we can differentiate them from any other keys in our environment. And then we need to store these in our environment. Now on localhost, you can put them in your bash profile, the dot bash profile file which lives in your user home directory. Okay, so here you can just say export stripe secret key equals the value that you get from stripe and then export pub stripe publishable key and the value. And remember this is the test environment value, not the live one. Okay, so that's done and then you can load that using source bash profile or if you just open a new terminal window, it'll automatically load that. Now since we added the configuration, change the initializer file, we also need to restart the server anyway. So let's do that. And now if we load the page, we can see a pay with card button. And when we click that, a payment form appears. So let's try that out now. So we can fill in all the details, email address, name, address, then the payment card info. You can use some test cards. I provide lots of them. So this 42421 is a test card which results in a successful payment. So enter a valid expiry date and just any numbers in the CVC and then submit the form 
and that takes a few seconds and the payment is successful but nothing happens here because we haven't done anything to handle define what happens when the charge is successful we'll do that in a moment but first I want to show you that this charge was created on the Stripe dashboard so this is my test Stripe dashboard and you can see there's a five dollar amount charged to this customer at this address and the great thing about using Stripe in this way is that you don't even need to store all this address data in your database we can directly use this and just send the product to the customer at this address so this saves us from having to deal with all this data in our database and for a very simple store that's good enough we don't need to worry about it okay now let's handle the successful payment scenario so we are going to add a new view called create.html.erb which is what the user will see once the charge is successful. So we can show them a thank you message and say that your shipment is on the way. So let's create it under the charges directory and we'll say thanks for your purchase and let's save it as create.html.erb your stickers are on the way and we'll show them a nice gif just for fun. One small change I want to make now is to move the header with the title and the link to the home page from the store index file into the application layout so that it's just available on all the pages. Okay, now let's try the form once more. Okay, just fill in the payment form info quickly. Pay, and this time we should get redirected to our new success page. Okay, there we go. So that works fine as well. Now let's just add a link back to the home page. So this header should link to the home page so that the user can easily go back. So I'm just going to add a link to root here. And let's style the link, make sure it doesn't get an ugly blue color or underline. Okay, let's also change the, the text on the button. Instead of pay with card, we're going to say buy now. Okay, that's better. Uh, let's just add a little bit of spacing under there. So I'm just going to give a class to this form and then we'll add a little bit of margin to that. Okay, that looks li slightly neater. Uh, let's just add another link back to the home page below this GIF and let's also change these uh, image assets to some images from S3 so that we don't have to check them into the repo. I'm going to delete the images from the assets folder uh, let's just add a h3 tag here so that it's on a new line um, let's change the image on the home page as well the sticker image and instead use a an image from s3 you can use a cdn or whatever online host you prefer okay now we are ready to check in our code into git and deploy to heroku so let's say git add git commit our new online store Okay, now we need to create a new Heroku app. So I'm assuming you've already installed the Heroku tool belt. If not, just go to heroku.com and download it. Okay, we'll say Heroku create stickers win and then git push Heroku master. That'll take a few seconds. Once that's done, this is the moment of truth. Heroku open. Hey, okay, our store loads and we can load a form. But you see, this is still in test mode and we actually want to make it production but before we do that I just want to show you something so let's just try this form let's fill it in with some example data and then when I click pay it doesn't work because we haven't actually set uh, the stripe keys in the environment so that's what we need to do first so we can do that using the Heroku config set method so we can say Heroku config set and then the two keys so first we'll do stripe publishable key equals and you copy and paste your production or test environment key whichever one you want to do on this app and then the stripe secret key and then you press enter and then the Heroku Dino will restart and then you can load the app now I'm actually going to to set my live production keys now I'm going to actually use the store and make a purchase and show you that it actually works okay so now the store is running with my live published with my live stripe keys so let's actually make a purchase so I'm going to click the buy now button fill in the details I'm just blurring these out because these are my real personal details fill in the card details
and click pay and it's accepted and boom done all right so i made my first purchase on my new sticker store now i want to show you the transaction on my stripe dashboard on my live stripe dashboard okay there it is so five dollars charged to me using the new store i just created and that's the email receipt both as the owner of the store and the and the customer and you can try this right now you go to stickers.win and you'll be taken to my live heroku store and you can purchase a pack of stickers and i will actually ship you a pack of five stickers thanks for watching